Hi guys, welcome to our today's video where we are going to look at how to register a limited company in Kenya, a private limited company for this case. I hope you learn more, enjoy, kindly click on the like and subscribe to learn more from this channel. If you want to register a limited company, you are going to use your browser and log into the eCitizen platform. Uh, if you don't, you, you don't have an already registered account, you can register your account. Uh, if you have a registered account like mine here, you just need to sign in to your eCitizen using your ID number and your password. So once you log in, you'll be able to see the different uh, platforms that we have here. So you can see there is the business uh, registration service on the far end here. So you click get service. Once you click get service here, you can now come to uh, uh, up there, there is make an application. So you can see all the types of applications we, are, we can make, but for today we are going to look on how to register a private limited company. So you click on apply now. Uh, things that you need to note before you start registering the company is that you need to come up with three distinct names that you want to call your company. So this, those names will be done the name search so that if one name is registered, uh, we can always move to the next and you'll be given the unique name that is not uh, registered. Another thing that you need uh, to make sure that you have is the amount of share capital that you want your company to start with an email address for the company, uh, which is not uh, registered on KRA. So if it's registered on KRA, it will be rejected. So if you have those, you can click on apply now. So the first step is giving your proposed name. Maybe what do you want to call your company? Maybe just for the purpose of practical, we can write, maybe we wanted to call our company Bradford Limited. Uh, maybe what you need to know is that you don't need to, to type company limited. You just need to type the name that you want to give your company. So we give the second name. You can maybe say it's Zillas. And you give your third name here, the name that you want to call your company. Then when you are through with your three names, you can click on save and continue. So those are the three names that will be done. Um, the, we are going to do such on. Then on the second, your name will be appearing because you are using your eCitizen account. So when your name appears, then you can go to uh, capacity. Who are you to that company? If you are registering your own company on your own, for this case, because you will own shares, you will be the director shareholders you can see the various positions is up here the secretary can register a company it can be a director a lawyer a beneficial owner or a shareholder a company must have at least one director and one shareholder so the moment you are registering a company on your own you uh, term yourself as the director shareholder since you will be the director of the company and still holding shares in that company then here you can give your address uh, maybe specifically for you. Then uh, what I always advise people is that for the articles of association, kindly um, you can kindly you, you, you can use what we have online. So like you can click here and learn most of it, but that's what we are going to use for now. For the objects of the company, just say it's non-regulated. The nature of business, uh, here I tell people maybe give the specific roles the company is going to do and never limit yourself. You find someone is registering a, a company, maybe to offer uh, advisory services or counseling services, for example. But if uh, a tender maybe for, to do supply comes across, these people will still need to do the supply. So you need to list all the purposes that you want to do with the company. So for now, if we choose our companies, we'll be doing maybe supplies. We can say the purpose is general trade. Then you go to 
the uh, activities that this uh, company will be engaging in. So you can see we have different activities here of what the company can engage in. So you choose depending on uh, the services that you want to, to give. So for this case, maybe our best here could be wholesale and retail trade. Then you go to the division. You choose wholesale and retail trade, except repair of motor vehicles. A group activity, maybe you can say, is wholesale of food, uh, beverages and tobacco, or or an unspecialized whole trade, maybe because you want to engage in so many activities, you can even supply books, and then you choose on unspecialized trade. The target start of the business date must be on the maybe the day when you are registering the company, or a, a day after, maybe some days after, but it can not be before the registration date. So for now, we can leave it at, at that. Accounting period month. When will you be sitting to uh, do uh, maybe check on your profit and losses and maybe share your uh, accountings? So for this case, you choose on December. Number of employees at, uh, at target start date. And you can see we are told to note include only the number of employees expected to earn more than Kenya shillings 13486 and zero if none. So for this case, maybe because you are the only directors of the company, please choose zero. What happens if you say you have one employee that wants to earn more? Is it will have a, a uh, it will have an effect on your KRA because you will be required now to submit um, the K you'll require to submit returns for your staff who are earning more than that because this will be uh, the tax bracket. Estimated annual turnover, how much are you expecting to uh, earn per year? You can choose your amount here. Again, here you need to, to note the repercussions. If it's more than 5 million, your KRA pin will be having a, um, what we call the VAT return. So if you don't want to get the, that obligation of the VAT, just choose a figure that is below 5 million. Then is the company you are registering a subsidiary company or a branch? If you already have a company, you are opening another branch, you'll choose yes. For now, because this is a new company, we say no. Was your business uh, formed as a result of amalgamation or acquisition? No. Then you save and continue. Then you go to the registered office address. Here is where or the offices of your company will be uh, situated. So maybe count here. You can just choose one county. For me, I'm situated in Kajiado. You choose Kajiado County. Uh, maybe Kajiado Central. The locality, that's the area that where you are in, Kajiado Town. In which building will the office be stated so for this case i can choose write the building the street uh for, for what we don't have an asterisk or a star at the top we can just leave it so the postal address postal code for kajiado Then you put your mobile phone number here or the mobile phone number for the company. Then the company email address. This way, what I said, you need to have a unique email address that has never been registered. Uh, the has never been registered for the KRE. If it's registered, it will be rejected. 
Again, any communication that will need to come from the registrars of company will be received at the, in this email, even for the purpose of registration for the KERA for the company. So if you make a mistake somewhere, I think what you love to receive, you can see, you cannot be able to move to the next step. So you find it's highlighted where you made a mistake, the, the format for the phone number, so you just change. Then you save and continue. <laughs> then on this, we need the share information. How much capital are you willing to to start maybe uh, your company with? So to, to input, you click on uh, add. Then you come to the share category. So for the purpose of registration, we start just when you are starting a company, we choose the ordinary shares. Then the number of shares, maybe let's say we need 1,000 shares and each share is worth 1,000. So when you have uh, such, when you are registering a company, it means our start capital is 1 million. The repercussion of this is depending on the amount you choose. If you are registering a company that has different shareholders or a lot of shareholders, tomorrow if I require to, to do a transfer of the shares there will be a stamp duty which depends on the value of each share so they have the amount per share they have the stamp duty so when i'm convinced if i don't need a preference shareholders i'll just save and continue then we'll come to the uh directors or the shareholders so if you want to add, uh, add a director or a shareholder you can click on this plus uh, button when you click on the plus button you come and you choose the designation uh, for now we are going to choose a director shareholder because it's a director who wants a share <laughs> then yeah you have to click is a kenyan citizen or depending on the id type sorry then uh, the id number of the director shareholder you put in the id Then we have the first name, that will be the name of the person uh, as written in the ID. Then you click on verify so that all the other details are able to auto-populate from the ID. As you can see, the date of birth, the KRA pin, and all that. Then we'll put the person's phone number here. the email address uh, what I've seen most people do is putting a wrong email address here and it brings a challenge when you want to do your transfer of shares or you want to exit the company because or you want to close the company because any communications from the registrar of companies must come to your email address so if you give a wrong email address be sure you get it rough anytime you want to close this company or do transfer of shares or any communication that comes from the director shareholder. Then you input your postal address and your postal code. Then what is your occupation? The one who is registering the companies. What is your occupation? Then you'll need to have a passport photo size uh, here, which is not compulsory. So you either choose to, to give a passport photo size or not. Then you choose your county. They are you situated your district and your locality then now we come to uh, we we said we will have 1000 shares so we come to choose the number of shares or uh, that you you pos you you have so for example uh, maybe for the purpose of learning i can say we only have two people for this company. So maybe I choose, I have 500 shares and the amount paid up to is 500. So automatically when you have 500 shares, meaning that your total ownership 
in terms of percentage in the companies it automatically becomes 50 percent then the direct ownership in the company just need to let the total ownership and direct uh, ownership be at par so you put 50 then we move to our total you have total voting lights let's also be 50 percent because you can see it's in sum of percentage then the direct voting rights to be a uh, 50 then the type of influence you put direct type of right to appoint or remove uh, other directors just leave it at none because it should come as an agreement uh, from uh, how you resolve when you meet as the company directors then we move to the effective date remember nowadays once you have more than 10 percent uh, you become a beneficiary of ownership in the company so if the date of becoming a beneficiary ownership can even be before you register the company so we can choose maybe it was 31st of january 2022 then when you come now to the source of beneficiary ownership uh, you need to put as pro uh, taken from an official registrar so that they need just to read your uh the what you have provided and that immediately becomes your yeah, uh the details that they'll provide on the source of beneficiary ownership so once you are satisfied you have made the correct information you click on submit if there is a challenge somewhere then you'll be asked to to fill the details like we had to skip the details of residence that the registrar need to be notified where you live you'll be for now you can say you live in second floor Pathetic Plaza. Then you submit. So once you submit, you'll see your name appears on top. Uh, up there. That's where you, you find the details that you have uh, entered. And in case you need to correct the details, you can see we have the edit button. In case you even need to remove the details, we also have the button whereby you can be able to delete all the details from there. So if you need to add another shareholder or a director or whatever for that matter, then you, you click on add, then you select the designation uh, maybe it's a shareholder, then you have to input all the details as we have done before. But for now, because I have only my details, I just come here and edit and say that I possess all the shareholders. So I'll assume I'm um, registering the company for just one person. So I'll be able to own all the shareholders. As you can see the total ownership is 100%. I make sure rhymes with the direct ownership the voting rights and even the direct voting rights and then i submit so once i'm satisfied with that if you need even to if your company will be having a secretary you can see there is a button of adding a secretary then we save and continue So we come now to the uh, source of beneficial ownership, or what we call the beneficial owners, will be directly benefiting from this company. As I had said, when you asked on the previous page on the uh, director, oh sorry, on the beneficial owner, you click on uh, taken from the official register. So this one will automatically auto-populate itself from the register. So you just need to click to save and continue. So once you have done all that, you will be required to download all these documents here and sign in each and every document. You can see, for example, if we download CR1, it has a explanation. Each document has its uh, own mandate. Like you can see CR1 is the details of the director, secretary, and authorized signatories of the company. 
So you can see that's what you need to uh, input here. Then the one who is registering the company, you need to sign all those documents down there. So you read the documents accordingly and also put your signatures accordingly. When you have already appended your signature on the documents, you click on uploading the documents. So we'll upload all the, the documents that we are required to upload here. Maybe a document that uh, I would like us to have a, a close look at is the statement of nominal capital. You can see <coughs> initially this document you are supposed to pay a, a stamp duty but as you register a company nowadays you are exempted from the stamp duty. You can see you have this, that stamp here exemption from the stamp duty so you are no longer required to pay. So we just upload it here. Then you have the beneficiary of ownership form. You again uh, upload that document. Then we uh, submit and review. So at this stage you are supposed to review whether what you have uh, given is correct. Once, once you are satisfied is correct. You click on, you confirm that the information you have given is correct. And then you finish. Once you finish, you are supposed to make your payments. So you choose the method that you want to choose to make your payments. You can see you have M-Pesa, the debit or prepaid cards, Airtel money. You have the easy pay for equity, Telcom T-Cash, E-Agent, Equity Cash, Pesa Link. So all the forms of payments are then provided herein. For example, if you want to use the M-Pesa, you'll be given the pay bill, the amount you want to pay, and uh, the amount you are required to pay, the pay bill, and the code. So once you make payments from your end, you can now click on complete. And if they confirm that the payments have gone uh, from the year side, they will be able to uh, to finish on on the registration in case there is uh, or there is a, a document that maybe you didn't feel well or you made a mistake uh, uh, somewhere once you again log into this page uh, you will be able to find the mistakes are highlighted here where you are supposed to make corrections if they register the company then what you'll find is that they will give you uh, a CR12 and a certificate of incorporation that you will be able to download from this uh, page. So guys, that's all for today. That's how you can register your limited uh, company. So in case you want to register one and you are not able to follow, you can always contact us. You can be able to assist here on Google maybe you can just google on kenya company registration and kre center uh, you can consult us on the same uh, on facebook uh, for today maybe that's what we have we later on will come with a video on how you're able to change the directors and navigate in through once you have registered a company even to make your annual chance thank you so much uh, enjoy your learning thank you